So let's talk about the Faraday Lentz Law. The Faraday Lentz Law is a very, very, very important law for electromagnetic fields that came out of two physicists, Faraday and Lentz. And that's why it's called that law. All right, so what it says is that when you have change in magnetic flux, you'll generate electromotive force, EMF. Now you can think of EMF just like voltage. It's not exactly the same thing, but for all intents and purposes, it kind of is. All right, so what's magnetic flux? Magnetic flux is magnetic field times the area. All right, so it consists of two different pieces. How big is the magnetic field and how big is the area over which the magnetic field is acting? All right, so the way that it works is when I have a change in magnetic flux, I generate an electromotive force to run a current around. Now remember that when you've got a current, you generate a magnetic field. Now, the way that the law works is that systems do not like change. So whenever the magnetic flux changes, the current is induced in such a direction as to minimize that change. All right? The way that it looks mathematically is EMF, EMF always looks like an electrified E, equals minus change in magnetic flux divided by change in time. This minus sign is Lenz's law. Lenz said that the magnetic flux um, change will, well, sorry, that the electromotive force will oppose the change in magnetic flux. So he gave the minus sign. This is Faraday. So Faraday Lenz. All right, so let's do an example. Suppose that I've got this situation. The magnetic field is directed out of the board. And let's say that B decreases. All right, so it's out of the board, but it's getting smaller. Now, remember the way that this works. Systems don't like change. It's not about trying to make the magnetic field zero. It doesn't like change. So it had all this magnetic flux already, and now the flux is going away. So the current is going to try to bring back the flux, and it's going to go, it's going to generate a current in such a direction that the magnetic field generated from the current is out of the board. So it's gonna generate a current in that direction if the magnetic field goes down, all right? What if the magnetic field uh, coming out of the board started to increase? Well, now we got more magnetic flux, but I don't want change. So now the current's gonna go in the other direction so that the magnetic field opposes that increase in, um, in magnetic flux. And so that's the way it goes. It's just kind of, all right, what was the change? And then let's try to mitigate that. Let's try to make it as small as possible. All right, now there's one very, very, very classy example of this. And I'm gonna show you a YouTube video that illustrates what happens. Now, as you watch this happen, um, the, the demonstrator is gonna drop a magnet down these two sides. This is glass, that's aluminum. Notice that the magnet running down the glass landed way before the aluminum did. So that's the idea. This magnet was coming down. We had a change in magnetic flux because the magnet was moving. And then that generated a current in the aluminum that opposed that change. It tried to slow the magnet down so that the change was not as big as it would have been otherwise. Now, what's interesting about this is that aluminum is not a magnetic material. You can take a magnet, touch it to alumina, it doesn't, it doesn't care. It's not a magnetic material. This was not a magnetic effect directly. It was the current that generated there. And even though aluminum is not a magnetic material, it certainly is a conductor and it will definitely support a current. So that's a very, very, very interesting example of how the Faraday Lenz law works. Another important example is the use of rail systems like the BART or like the Metro in DC. The way that these things work is the, the car is going and it, there it goes, it goes, it goes. We get to the station and suddenly there's a magnetic field introduced. It doesn't like the change, so it tries to stop to make that change take place slower. All right, let's do an example. So this is a numerical example. I've got a five Tesla magnetic field 
and it's directed out of the page and it changes to zero Tesla in 0.1 seconds. And I want to know the EMF that's generated in a wire loop that has two square meters of area. And I want to know the average current um, if the resistance is 20 ohms. All right, so let's see how this goes. First thing I need to do, because the EMF is equal to minus the change in flux over the change in time, I need to find out the change in flux. Well, the area of the loop didn't change. So it's not the area that changed, it's the magnetic field. So the change in flux is going to be the change in magnetic field times the area. Well, the magnetic field changed from five to zero. So the change was negative five times the area, which is two. So we'll have negative 10 and then it'll be Tesla square meters. All right. So that is my change in magnetic flux. What about the change in time? Well, the change in time is 0.1 seconds. So the EMF will be equal to minus, and I've got uh, negative 10 Tesla meters squared over 0.1 seconds. And so that's going to give me 100. And what do you think the unit is? Well, we could work through what is a Tesla meter squared per second, or we could say it's an EMF, so it must be volts. All right, everything's in SI units, so everything's in SI units. Very, very, very simple. All right, now I want to know the uh, average current. Well, if I've got an EMF of 100 volts, resistance of 20 ohms, current equals V over R, so the current will be 5 amps. Now, what direction will that current be in? Well, if this is my wire and I've got magnetic field coming out of the board, but it's going down, right? Then I want to bring back the flux. So this is going to be a counterclockwise current. All right. Now, another wonderful example of the use of the Faraday lens law is in the construction of something called a rail gun. What a rail gun is, is it's a construction like this. We've got a wire that comes down. I put a little resistor in there. Um, a wire that comes down like this, and then we have here a movable metal bar, and this is the rail, all right? And then we impose an extremely strong magnetic field on the whole configuration. And then when we want to fire it, what do we do? Get rid of the magnetic field. Very quickly, no magnetic field. So now, what does the system want to do? Well, it wants to bring back the flux. Look, there was all that flux. It wants to bring it back. So it's going to generate a current, in the, in the direction that will generate a magnetic field into the page. So that's like that. So this current is gonna be going around like that after I turn off the magnet, or while I'm turning off the magnetic field. Now notice what happens. I've got a current going down in a magnetic field directed into the page. So now I've got a force out like that. And this rail is going to accelerate very, very, very quickly and just be fired off the edge of it. And that's a rail gun. Now, one interesting way that we can think about this effect, instead of thinking about the current and the force on that, we could change our viewpoint. And we could say, all right, how can the system act to lower this change in flux? How can it bring back the flux? Well, one way that it could do it, it doesn't have as much flux this thing's movable. Flux is magnetic field times area. Moving this can't change the magnetic field, but it can certainly change the area. So if I want the flux to remain the same, what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna increase the area so that B times A won't go down as fast as it would have if I just had the same area. And so that's a railgun, and that's the Faraday-Lenz law.